And welcome to Nancy's Neighborhood, folks. And we're back in the same little situation we were in for the last show. I'm kind of getting used to it. And, and Bryce says he likes it a whole lot better than trying to work in that other little space. But anyway, whatever. And, you know, Bryce is my producer. And whatever he tells me is what I try to do. And I try to smile when I do it because Bryce is a great guy. And he's graduating in May and going to MTSU. And, and I'm losing him. And I hate that. And I'm trying to get him to commute on Mondays and Wednesdays from MTSU to still do my show, but so far we've not been able to work that out. But anyway, I have a guest today that, that uh, has something coming up almost immediately. So as you all well know, we are live on Facebook right now, and so I want you to watch that. If you've got Facebook, WTNB TV on the Facebook, because this is something you need to know about right now, or it will be on uh, YouTube Bryce will try to get it loaded up this afternoon, and so it will be on YouTube. Same thing, WTNB TV. And then it'll also be on Charter Channel 5, Comcast 20, I'm sorry, Comcast, Comcast 210, and Rabbit Ears 27. So this is coming up almost immediately, and that's why I wanted to get this guest on so she could tell you about it, because there may be some volunteer opportunities for you all. And this is Mead Vest. Welcome. Thank you very much, Nancy. Good to have you on with us today. And she is, uh, the initials I have, NCFCA, and I asked her to explain to you all what that is. Yes, National Christian Forensics Communications Association. So that is a national league that is a homeschool, high school speech and debate league. Okay, and this is exciting because we have a whole lot of young people coming into Cleveland, Bradley County, and tell us a little bit about that. What are they going to do, and give us some dates, and where are they going to be? I would love to. So this is our 11th year, actually, coming into Cleveland, Bradley County. Uh, typically, we were at Westwood Baptist Church for the past 10 years, but this year, we are hosting the event at Lee University. Marvelous. And the reason we are hosting it at Lee University is because this year, it is open to the whole nation. Wow. So there will be students coming in from all over the country that will be competing in speech and debate over the course of Wednesday morning, this Wednesday morning through Saturday evening. We wow. have events uh, such as moot court and debate, and then we have 11 different speaking events that students will compete in starting at 7.15 in the morning all the way through about 10 o'clock at night every day, Wednesday through Saturday. And you're going to expect a teenager to talk at 7.15 in the morning. Yes, actually. Whoa. They will be dressed very sharply in their suits. Uh, these are students aged 12 to 18 years old, and they will be in their suits. They will be ready to speak. They will have all of their evidence with them and citations and um, research done and speeches memorized, and they will be ready to go. Wow, and this sounds so exciting. Now, I know for the past several years, I've been invited to be a judge, but have not been able to work it into my schedule. So I know um, the uh, the lady that came by the shop, and I'm having a senior moment, uh, that, that asked me if, if we could be on TV. And I said, sure, um, ask me this year if I could judge. And I said, I'm so sorry, I cannot. So explain a little bit about volunteer judges. I would love to. There are lots of opportunities for volunteer judges. We have uh, rounds that we ask uh, volunteers to judge starting at 7.15 in the morning all the way until late in the evening. The uh, times are about every two hours we bring in a new group of judges to judge the students. Um, every other round is a debate round, and then every other round is a speech round. So sometimes judges will volunteer one round, or sometimes they will volunteer for two or three rounds in a row. Those rounds will last, the, the judge can expect to be there for about three hours. So they'll arrive on campus at 7.15. The first thing they will do is go get a cup of coffee. Good. Then they will um, get a ballot and go through our orientation, a very short orientation to help them to know what to expect and how to evaluate our students. Next, we will direct them to the classroom that they will go to where they will evaluate the students in either a debate round or a speech round. Then they will come back to our hospitality room where they can get some light snacks and finish filling out their ballots. The whole process takes in the neighborhood of about three hours. And this is, this is an awesome experience for judges and for participants. And, and I wish I could be there for this, but, but my calendar's already full. I'm just not going to be able to do it. But I think this is so exciting to put these young people 
in an opportunity where they can either debate or do a speech, which I think is, I'm, I'm a perfect person to say, I think if you can't debate what you feel strongly about, then you don't need to feel that strongly about it. If you can't defend yourself, then, then you need to look at something else to do. Well, the mission of NCFCA is to promote excellence in communication by providing competitive opportunities for homeschool high school students. And the goal is to be able to help them to learn to think critically and to be able to communicate articulately, effectively, winsomely. And the whole goal is for them to be able to address life issues from a biblical worldview in a manner that glorifies God. And I think that sounds awesome. I really do. Now, let me ask you about the debate teams. How many is on a team? We have two different styles, actually three different styles okay. of debate. Okay. Moot court is considered debate. Okay. And um, moot court is two people on a team, and they are basically given a, um, a case that is a fictional case, but it is something that could be potentially seen in an appellate court. This okay. year is related to election law, and so it is though they are appealing a lower court's decision in this moot court round, and we have some attorneys that are coming in to be judges, but we also have lay people that are coming in to be judges for Neat. our moot court rounds. Then we also have two other styles of debate. Team policy debate is uh, two people on a team against two other people, and they are debating a policy. This year's policy, um, our resolution, is resolved that the United States should significantly reform its policy toward higher education. So that oh, ought yes. to be very interesting. It should be real interesting, yes. Our other style of debate is Lincoln-Douglas, and Lincoln-Douglas is one student against mm -hmm. one student in a value debate, just like the Lincoln-Douglas debates over slavery years right. ago. So our Lincoln-Douglas resolution this year is resolved that nationalism ought to be valued above globalism. Wow. So another hot topic. Uh, yes. Okay, so now these, these students have been practicing this or... I mean, this is not, yes. you're not going to hand them a piece of paper and they're going to flat-footed do this. No. Okay. So they have been, they've been researching these topics since the beginning of the school year, since August. However, they don't know when they walk into the room what the opponent's argumentation is going to be or what their case is. So sometimes they will hit a case that they know nothing about, and then they have to oh. be able to draw on their logic and their understanding of the topic and the information that they've already researched to be able to come up with arguments against their opponent. Now, that sounds interesting. That's kind of like flying by the seat of your pants. Here we yes, go. Yes, it is. Here we go. And and you have to be articulate yes. in doing that. Certainly. In, in flying by the seat of your pants. I think that sounds extremely interesting. I really do. It is a great skill that we're trying to teach these students to be able to fly by the seat of their pants, mm -hmm. but be able to use the information that they already have in their brain to be able to put pieces together and make sense of the argument and make sense of what their position is in the situation. And I think that sounds awesome. So now you could use volunteers. I understand you're not full up with judges yet. That's right. We, okay. we will use volunteers. So typically uh, for an event this size, we need about 900 judges oh, wow. for this event. About half of them tend to come from our parents who are on site because the parents are bringing these students and staying for the entire four days. Right. So you've got a captive audience right there. Right. So okay. the parents fill approximately half of those judge slots, but then we rely on community volunteers for the other half. And we are looking for people from all walks of life. We have uh, college students that are there and we have housewives and we have bankers and lawyers and doctors and uh, manufacturers, we have everybody from all walks of life that come will that will come and judge. The way that they can find out about us I is by going mm -hmm. going to the website, and it will be ncfcajudges.com. So it's pretty simple, right? Ncfcajudges.com. Ncfcajudges.com. And Bryce can put that up, hopefully. NCFCA, Bryce, ncfcajudges.com, and we hope we get that up for people to know how to do that. And uh, what I think is great is you're going to offer coffee to those people that are going to be there at 715 because I, I couldn't. Absolutely. Oh, golly. You know, I, that judging that, especially if it got really too intellectual, I'd have a hard time with it at 715 in the morning. But I think this is wonderful. Now, is this a requirement from these students, or do they volunteer to do this, or 
how, how do you get the people that are going to debate? That actually is an excellent question. All of the students are homeschool students. Mm -hmm. So in my household, it's required. Okay. But I can't speak for anyone else. <laughs> I think that uh, learning to communicate well and winsomely and articulately and all of the skills that come along with learning, debate, and speaking um, are a requirement for life. So yes. in my household, it is a requirement just like math is a requirement. Got gotcha. you. Okay. But, but the others may be there under duress or maybe there because they want to be there. So. Yes. Some students, the parents are the ones who are the driving force behind them being there, but eventually most of the students learn to love it. They like the camaraderie among the students. They enjoy the challenge of learning the material. They enjoy the um, benefit of the, co the um, corporate situation where all of the students are cheering for one another and encouraging one another on even though they're competing against one another. And I think that's wonderful. Now you said this was a national event so where where can we anticipate students will be coming from? Um, for certain our region which is Tennessee, Alabama, Louisiana, Mississippi, and Arkansas. Okay. I know that there are also students coming from Texas, um, Illinois, Georgia, Florida, South Carolina, North Carolina, so fantastic. So these are all staying in hotels, motels in our town? Or? Yes. Okay. The majority of them are staying with hotels in our town. Some of them might be staying with family members if they have somebody local, cousins, aunts, uncles, grandparents, that kind of thing, or friends. But the majority are staying in hotels. Um, they'll drive in either Tuesday evening or Wednesday at some point, depending on if they're participating in moot court, because the moot court is only being held on Wednesday. Okay. The rest of the events are Thursday through Saturday. All right. And then they will head home on Sunday. And they have a schedule. They know what time they're supposed to be there. Oh, yes. And, okay, so this is another. Everything is, is very scheduled out. I, well, I can imagine because if you have that many, like how many do you anticipate? How many How many students do you think you'll have? There should be about 150 students wow. here. Okay. And everything is very scheduled. They actually have no lunch break and no dinner break. So they get to go from speech to debate to speech to debate and grab something as they can. We... Um, contract with vendors around the city and bring in food so that they can pick up their lunch and eat it quickly and be on their way to their next round. And that's wonderful. And I know Melissa Woody at the Chamber of Commerce is probably just drooling over this because she's always talking about heads in the beds of our, of our motels and also then uh, supporting our local endeavors, our local restaurants, our local caterers. Our, our, and so I know she's thrilled to death about this. So Melissa, if you're listening today, you need to volunteer to be a judge and support this because this is something that's bringing a lot of tourists into Cleveland Bradley County. Yes, and this is this is awesome. Now, is this your first year to be participating, or how long have you been involved? No, this is my 16th year in the okay. league. So, we, like we like I said, we've held an event here. This is our 11th year holding right. an event in Cleveland. Right, and I've been involved all of those 11 years. Okay. So. Now, before it was in Cleveland, where where were you all? Well, we have a local club here in Cleveland. Okay. So we um, we meet with about 12 other families in Cleveland to help instruct the students in our club. And then our students from our club travel around to other tournaments. And and okay. we, we also choose to host a tournament. So some of the other tournaments that are in our region um, this year were held in Memphis and Montgomery, Alabama. And Hattiesburg, Mississippi will be our next tournament. Baton Rouge, Louisiana will also be a tournament this year. And and this is awesome because the kids get to experience it not just here, not just one time, right? but they're going to do it five or six, seven times. Yes. And, and that really would build up their confidence in doing something like this. Now, on the list of where you've been, is this like – Number one, number two, number three, how, how far down the line is Cleveland? This is our third tournament okay. in our region for mm -hmm. the year, but there have been two other national opens that anybody in the nation could go to. One was in Wisconsin and one was in North Carolina. Okay. In Wisconsin, it was probably too cold to go up there, but anyway. <laughs> but I think this is so awesome, and I think, like I say, I'm just so sorry that I can't judge this year and haven't been able to judge in the past. Uh, but I have friends that have judged, and hopefully they're watching the show today. And, and hopefully they'll go to ncfcajudges.com and, and sign up to judge. And it starts Wednesday at 7.15. Yes, it does. 
Okay. It's a great experience for judges. The majority of our judges walk away saying, that was one of the best things I've done all year. I love to hear these students with their passions and their ideas and their interests and articulate so winsomely and beautifully. I now have hope again for our nation. See, and that's that's what's so marvelous is when, when you do that. And I know you've had judges before who have probably come back every year. Oh, and absolutely. Judge for you. We have people that take time off work to judge for us wow. all three days. Fantastic. Yes. And so all you need to do, folks, ncfcajudges.com if you're interested in judging. And if you can't get there at 715 on Wednesday morning, maybe they'll find a slot for you somewhere. There are slots every two hours all day long. Okay, that sounds great. Mead, thank you so much for being with me today. I really do appreciate it. And uh, you're you're already here, so you have your team lined up and ready to go, I, I'm, uh, I'm assuming. And, uh, and other teams will be here. And people in Cleveland-Bradley County, please welcome these tourists as they come in because they're going to spend money in our community and they're going to put heads in the beds in our motels. So that's what's great. Thank you very much, Nancy. Thank you, and I hope it's a huge success. And thank you, Lee University, for working with you all on this because Lee's a wonderful community friend. They really are. Folks, don't go away. We'll be right back with some more information for you, some other things that are happening and that you might be interested in. So watch our commercials, support our sponsors because they pay our bills. And I'll be right back.